What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome to this ethical Jurassic Park series in Jurassic World Evolution 2. The goal for this series is to recreate Jurassic Park on Isla Nublar with the same dinosaur species and the number of dinosaurs featured in the movie, but creating the park with a strong focus on the dinosaurs' welfare, getting all the dinosaurs' habitats to be exactly what they want, and hopefully not losing too many guests along the way. This park is built in sandbox mode, but with all the economy and research settings turned on. Details of the sandbox settings are in the description. In the previous video, we added Brachiosaurus to our huge herbivore habitat by introducing Dryosaurus to the park, as well as adding some much needed fence upgrades. And what a beautiful group of dinosaurs we've got now. Look at them. Now we've started our Brachiosaurus herd. I love this. Um, they still say that they're missing forest, but we know that as soon as they expand their territory, we, we've got enough forest in here. We've got loads over here, so they'll be absolutely fine. Uh, but we are missing a few Brachiosaurus because in Jurassic Park, apparently there are six Brachiosaurus and we only have three. So we do need to continue to synthesize Brachiosaurus. And there was one, you guys pointed out in the comments that there's one site that I missed for the Brachiosaurus. It's in here somewhere. There it is. So I think we should do this one first. Try and get them to 100%. And then, then we could do them. Let's go for the, uh, let's go for the other generalist over here. Um, and then we can get those three out. We'll be done in, in five minutes. And maybe we should get some research going. We've got the genetics uh, people unlocked. And I think the heavy fences we want are all logistics. So I'm not going to do them quite yet. But let's have a look at what else we might be able to do as far as research. I know that we really want the Triceratops, but for that, we're going to need to release three dinosaurs with a defensive trait and have unlocked these like trails of uh, of, species, of research here. So I think this unlocks at 20, so then it's just... So essentially it's 20 dinosaurs and release three dinosaurs with a defensive trait. Now for that, I think we already unlocked the, uh, the Dryosaurus, and I believe they're in here. Uh, there they are, the Dryosaurus. So we do also need to start getting Dryosaurus. So I think we'll do that in this episode too. Try and fill out our Brachiosaurus herd and then we need to get some Dryosaurus to unlock the, the Triceratops. And you guys have given me loads of suggestions about what we should do with the um, with the Dryosaurus. And like, do we keep them here? Do we, uh, do we release them somewhere? Like, I, I kind of... Do, do we even have another section of the park that they just didn't know about in Jurassic Park? You know, that the guests didn't know about in Jurassic Park? I kind of like the idea that they will just live in our massive herbivore uh, habitat until they pass away. And we'll just give them normal lifespans. We won't give them like these really extended lifespans that we've been doing with everyone else. I think they've just synthesized them because they've just, uh, sorry, they've just anesthetized them because they were attacking the, the truck or they're attacking the fence. I'm not sure. Ooh. These guys are having a go at the fence though. So let's get let's get Ranger Team 3 over here quickly. Oh no, here we go. Right. Pausing the game. Let's open all shelters. I think the guests will be okay. We really need these heavy fences over here. I'm just going to drive this one because we need to close that fence as soon as possible. And let's shoot a flare in to try and distract them. Oh, there's a they're already running out. All right, I think we got there just in time. Oh, except there's two out here. I th our chopper should be called automatically for this. Yeah, I think they're turning around. Are they? No, they're not. Okay, right. We're just going to go do it ourselves. <laughs> it wouldn't be an episode of this series without me manually darting the, uh, the Dilophosaurus. But hey, they've got character and, you know, they're getting a great streak of escapes right now. Nice right, that one's down. Let's get the other one over here. Oh no. Oh dear. Well, that's not... Oh dear. Okay. That's not going to serve us well for publicity. Mostly a safe space. He's got to go down. Yes. Okay. I was going to say, before he, before he gets someone else. But also, why are these people not in the shelters? I feel like 90% of people immediately run into the shelters. And then you've got people like this. What are you doing? <laughs> like, get the message. This has been open for ages. Right, I'm going to close all the shelters now because everything's safe. They're back in there. But as soon as we get this, uh, this expedition done, we are getting those fences and upgrading all of this because they desperately need it. 
I'm going to resupply with fuel everywhere as well. Because they also need that. I don't think... Oh, I think oh, we're good for power. Uh, we can see, yeah, we're using 10 of 60. So we're absolutely fine. Um, we can always upgrade our power in a bit too. But I, I think that the heavy fences use less power than the, uh, the large ones. Because I don't believe they're electrified. I think it's just concrete. So we'll have to see... I have to see what happens there with that, but at least we can, uh... Oh, look at them. They look, like, sad. <laughs> so being transported in. <laughs> oh, bless. I, I don't know who's currently winning on escapes, but that, that was not, that was not good. Can I see which one this is? Oh, probably when they land, we can see. But there is a bit of a competition internally with these uh, Dilophosaurus at the minute to see who can break out the most. Where does it say? I swear it says somewhere. Oh, this fence is broken three. There we go. Broken three fences. Probably going straight back to it. <laughs> I know, he's going, he's going for the goat. That's okay. That's okay. Very cheeky, these guys. Very cheeky. Oh, and look, our Brachiosaurus is sleeping. <gasps> this one's lying down. Wow. They're so cool. These might be my favorite that we have in the park so far. Okay, they, they've uh, they've fully transported the, the Dilophosaurus back. That's good. That's good. How's everyone getting on in here as well? I feel like they're doing well. We do need to rename all of the powers. And my goodness, did you guys have a lot of name suggestions. So... Perhaps we should do that now. Let's go through and rename our para... Oh, I can never say it. Parasaurolophus. I think that was good. Parasaurolophus. Maybe I'm learning. <laughs> now, the most popular suggestion for the para's names was Ducky from A Land Before Time. But also, I think it goes so nicely into the next theme, which someone suggested, which was to have them all be duck build names. So to have like webs and mallard... And Billy. <laughs> so we're going to have a few duck build theme names. And then also, I love the idea that some of you had of doing them as kind of like, because they're all herbivores doing plant-based ones. So I think I might just name the rest of them after flowers, like daffodil, rose, lavender, sunflower, lily, hawthorn, bramble, ivy, fern, tulip, and finally, I think we'll go for a nice orchid. And these are just flowers and plants that came to my mind while recording. So th th hopefully you guys like my selections. I feel like they're quite cute. Um, so we've got some nice, we've got some duck bill themes. We've got some plant life. And obviously for our Brachiosaurus, we need to re rename these two. And I believe the most popular um, suggestion was Littlefoot from A Land Before Time as well. But we're not just going to have Littlefoot on their own. Also realizing that Littlefoot is probably one word. <laughs> so we've got Littlefoot. Then we're also going to have Alan and Ellie. Because they are the first dinosaurs that Dr. Alan Grant and Ellie Sadler see in Jurassic Park. So I think it's a perfect name suggestion. Thank you, guys. You always give the best names. And I really feel like it adds to the series to have these named the, the cutest things. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that. And please keep the name suggestions coming for all of the future dinosaurs we get. We will rename everyone in this park. So please do suggest those. Now, I believe we have finished our expedition and we need to get our fossils. So let's hope we've got the rest of these Brachiosaurus. That's plus 5%, you can see, from 93. Plus 7, there we go. That's everything we, we've got there. And then we've got some... Oh, no, that, that's the same fossil. I was going to say, we don't normally get bonus ones. Right, should we just get rid of some other fossils? We're not really bothered about any of these. Let's get rid of those, and then we're, then we're good. Um, let's get these two on it to go as fast as possible. Should be done very quickly, and then we'll actually add the Brachiosaurus into the park. So I'm just going to skip forward in time to when this has timed out, and we will do that now. Oh, I say I'm going to skip forward. Someone's had an injury. Shocker, it's one of the Dilophosaurus. <laughs> Um, I believe a sprain is something that the medical unit can do. Um, they can't quite reach this. Oh, they can, though. 
All right, let's let's drive it manually. God, these Dilophosaurus are the biggest pain. <laughs> the biggest pain in the park. Though I say that, we've got to wait until we get Velociraptors because they normally they they normally get to me. <laughs> That's so annoying to look after. Right, let's get you down here. The truck won't like doing it like with the AI because there's so many trees. Right, let's medicate you. Cheeky little one. Getting sprained, putting damage in fences. That's probably good. I think two should do it. Slowly reverse out. Yeah. Oh. Oh, is that cute? Oh, no. Okay, it did. It did. 100%. They are back to normal. Now, let's make the Brachiosaurus, because I can see that this is 100% now. Do we want to modify them anymore? I don't think we've unlocked anything since, so I don't think there's much point... Other than... No, we, we, we're good. I'm just going to do exactly the same Brachiosaurus. Let's release. Let, let's, let's get these guys on it. Get the three of them going. And get a nice synthesis. And we probably only then need to do it once. Because hopefully we'll get a batch... Oh, no, no. We, we need a batch size of three. I was thinking we needed two. We'd have to do two batches um, to, to get these guys. But I think that's absolutely fine. We'll do that next. And then we'll get our Dryosaurus in. Okay. How many have we got? Okay. Oh, this one's fine. It's large appetite is absolutely fine. Let's see what our second batch does. And then we can choose our favorite three from them. Okay. Second batch complete. Oh, we only got one viable egg. And it's absolutely fine. Okay. So we're going to do all three of these. Let's do uh, this one first on its own. Oh, we're going to need to rest our scientists. Let's do that first. And then we will get our Brachiosaurus in there. And maybe while these guys are resting, we... Are we able to synthesize any more? I'm not sure we are. Unless we have an upgrade for it, we don't. Okay, we're just going to rest as many scientists as we need um, to make sure that everyone's ready. Had another quick breakout from the Dilophosaurus, but it's fine. Good old Seth. Or set? I think it's set. I think that's how you say it. Um, I could be wrong, though. Let me know in the comments, because, you know, I'm wrong about pretty much everything with pronunciation. <laughs> Okay, my goodness, those Dilophosaurus. Right, I think now they're sedated. Let's close the shelters, and uh, and let's let's incubate these dinosaurs. Let's do the two. Get these two going. Gonna need probably these three on it, and then we'll wait for them to be done, and we can finally release some of our Brachiosaurus. I am wondering as well, if we hire a final member of staff, we could get another one who's kind of good at logistics and get that fence research going while we wait. So I think, oh, there's another genetics spe specialist there. Oh, that is good. Um, there's another generalist. That would be, gr she would be great for us. There's four and four. Let's get this generalist. Um, and I know she's expensive, but we have the money and then we can, uh, we can get the enclosures we want. Let's get the heavy fence. And hopefully this will be the last we have of <laughs> Dilophosaurus breaking out. I don't think that's worth actually exhausting. Oh no, we need them. We need them. Okay. Half a million as well. Half a million dollars. But worth it for the uh, the concrete fences. They must be... It must be some very technical concrete to, <laughs> to research it for half a million dollars. To be like, oh, you know, that's how we make a concrete fence. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh no, I can hear that sound. That's a storm. Let's open these shelters and uh, let our guests out. Already got a broken fence. Where is that? Oh, that's here. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go for our other ranger team. I think these are fine. These guys aren't really bothered about breaking out, so it's, I'm not worried about them particularly. I am worried about these guys. Oh no, I think we'll, we'll prioritize fixing fences while they're going in and then we'll move on to uh, other bits after, like buildings. Let's, uh, let's take control of this Jeep. Oh my goodness. Wow, okay. <laughs> wow, so this, this is quite a storm. I don't know if we just got like headbutted by a, by a para or something. That car was out of control. Okay, let's go, let's fix this. Is there another fence over here? I think there's one at the end, so we might as well repair this while we go. And just foot to floor. Let's get this last one. These Jeeps really move as well. And then we're going to do a nice spacebar handbrake turn. Still, fast to 
That did work. <laughs> Storm said no. Wow, okay. We've got an injury over here as well. I'm going to sign the, the vet unit to get them. And to medicate these guys as well. And these guys, oh my goodness, there's a lot of injuries. What's going on? Okay, Ranger Team 3, fix this. Mobile vet unit, we'll, we'll use you directly. Let's, let's go heal all our dinos. Okay, we've got a couple in here. There's one over on that side. We're just going to straight up medicate them, I think. Or should we... Do we need to scan them first? I don't think so. I think we know what it is. Yeah, surface wounds. Okay. Right, you should be good. I give him another one just to... Oh, I think I'll miss. They are quick. <laughs> I think it's good. Does it need another one? I'll see if I can get him with another one. Avoid the goat. Yeah, I think they need two. Okay, I'm going to go through the middle here. There we go. And then there's another one over here. That one is probably good, but you can never be too safe. So let's let's go with that and then drive out. There's a gate near here. I can't believe we don't have a gate on this side. All right, I'm going to add another gate in because <laughs> I swear we had a gate down here. Let, let's put one here. That will help us massively. And then we can go and heal our other dinos. We should probably open the enclosures as well because everyone is safe. It's just our dinosaurs are a little bit sick. Um, and there's a gate over here, so let's go in through this one, and then we'll just medicate our little herbies as well. Poor things. Don't want them to be sick either. I mean, I don't want any of them to be sick, but the Dilophosaurus, I go back and forth on. <laughs> Depends how annoying they are. It's, it's mostly because the Dilophosaurus is self-inflicted by uh, smashing their heads against fences. I swear you were sick a second ago. Okay, they're okay. Might have just been an illness they've they've uh, worn off or something. Can we get them across the lake? I think we'll be lucky. There we go, there we go, surface wounds. It could be that the storm itself was uh, damaged them rather than the fences, because I didn't see anyone around any fences. Oh, there's another one in here. Okay, I'm just going to assign them to... Uh, to this one and then that's probably good um, we can release these brachiosaurus and have a look at them wow they're massive aren't they it really puts the scale like it really puts them in perspective like how huge they are how colossal Very cool. Okay, let's uh, let's get our others, our scientists on this batch of one. And I believe we're done with our research as well, which should mean that we've unlocked all the heavy fences. Um, there's an injury over here though. They're injured with concussion. Can we medicate that with a... I'm not sure we can. Let's take control of our vet again. Where are they? They haven't left yet. Nope, we're going to go reverse. Look at our new Brachiosaurus in the background. And let's go see Tulip, because something's wrong. And if she's properly injured, we may need to, uh, uh, like, medicate her. We'd sedate her and uh, transport her to our medical facility for proper treatment. So I hope that's not the case. I hope it's a quick fix with the, uh, with the vet unit we've got here. But I'm a bit nervous, because I'm not sure it is. Let's see if this will help. No, it's not going to help. He has a concussion. We need to actually... One more try. No, this will just boost their health if it doesn't do anything else. Okay, we need to sedate her then and get her into the medical facility. Ah, and their uh, task starts are full. Let's do it manually. Never used this chopper before. Come over here. Oh, poor thing, it's got concussion. That must be from ramming their head against the fence. 
bet they're gonna run as well. Right. One, two, okay. Whew. Sedated. Now we can transport them into our medical facility here. And then we can assign a uh, scientist to, to heal them. At the minute, we don't actually have anyone. Um, yes, we will do this manually. We'll, we'll assign them now because we've only got... We've got our staff on this. I'm actually a bit concerned about whether they're going to be able to do it in time. Um, but I don't think they like time out on here. But they've got a couple of minutes left where they're not going to be able to do that. In the meantime, I'm going to upgrade our fences to level 5. Which is the heavy fence. Oh, I thought this was uh, the concrete one, but no, in Jurassic Park, this is just like even more barbed wire and stuff. Okay, we'll go for this though. It looks a bit scary, but... Oh no. Well, this is... This is the perfect example of why we need it. <laughs> yeah, I think this, this perfectly symbolizes what our situation is. Just that freeze frame right there. Well, this is not good. This is really not good. Let's open our shelters. Let's just sedate all of our Dilophosaurus. Okay, well, we'll do those three and then we'll do the others. And let's repair the fences because they desperately need repairing. And in fact, I'm going to jump in this and do it manually because I don't trust them to do it quick enough before the others jump out. There's our massive deep. But the goat's running free. Oh my goodness, there's just going to be a goat in our park now. We're never gonna get that out. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I bet the goat will like have a, everyone will name it and then it'll be like a little mascot of the park. But there's just a goat that runs free. You gotta leave name suggestions for the goat in the comments and that's what we'll call it whenever we see it from now on. There's a few bits that weren't repaired after the storm as well. We should probably assign the ranger teams to fix all this. Oh, I think it's pretty much good. Oh, it's over here. Right, let's get Ranger Team 2 to fix some of these buildings. Backup power and stuff. Always good to fix. If your backup power isn't there, you do not have backup power. <laughs> okay, let's... let's. Uh, do we leave them out here? I think I might just leave them out here for now while we replace all of these fences. And we can just do all of them at the same time. And these should be able to tranquilize the final two as well. So we'll, we'll let them do that while we just repair all of the fences. And I would be surprised. I'm going to leave them over there because they're right there. Um, I would be surprised if they can break out of this now. This seems very heavy duty. Oh no, okay. He's too close to the fence. Let's move him over here. And let's move these in as well. But we'll move them right into the middle. They'll be fine. Because once he's taken away, we can do these last fences. But the other fences are coming in pretty quickly. So I'm not too nervous about that. Come on, take them away. It's always the weird like uh, ragdoll effects that I kind of love whenever they attach to this. Like, they just become so, uh, so floppy. <laughs> There we go. On the uh, on the elastic wire. There we go. Oh, floopy little ragdoll of uh, Dilophosaurus. There we go. Right. Last fences are going in. And that should be good. Look, look how heavy duty this is. That's, that's pretty, pretty insane. Also, I noticed that this pole was the wrong type of pylon. Like, I, I can't, I can't let that happen. So I'm going to replace with the, with this type of pylon instead. Just gonna delete this and then connect them up like this. Because that's much better. <laughs> and our scientists are done. So let's assign them to this poor little fella right here. And get him done even quicker when we put two of them on there. Treat them for a concussion. Little things. And if we're letting the others walk free, we might as well just unsedate these. Just there. Uh, well, we'll just transport them. We could also just get our uh, chopper to like unsedate them they just put i don't know what they give them adrenaline or something i don't know they wake them up but we'll just move them and that'll do the same trick now for a final brachiosaurus this is brachiosaurus number six to complete the herd 
Please leave some more name suggestions for these final three Brachiosaurus as well. I'm wondering whether one of them should be Malcolm or whether we should maybe rename the T-Rex Malcolm. <laughs> There we go, and Tulip's better at the same time. Isn't that perfect? Now we can transport Tulip back to, oh, I think we do it from in here. Let's uh, transport Tulip back into the habitat and she will be, or he, no, it's probably a, it's probably a girl, Tulip, um, will be just dandy. In fact, I think all of them are female, aren't they, in Jurassic Park? That's the whole point, is they're all supposed to be female, so they can't breed. Um, two of them have diseases. Oh no, they got infected wound. That is not good. There's quite a few alerts at the top of our screen, but if we close the shelters, we can get rid of one of them immediately. And these all seem fine. It's just power notifications and stuff. And we do have a couple of diseases which we need to sort. So if we get in our uh, med vehicle, we can do these now. It's just struggling to reach them because of all the trees, which is a little bit annoying, but could be worse. Oh dear, I don't think we can treat this one. Oh, it's medication not researched. Right, okay. What have they got? Infected wound. Is that something we can research? Okay, medicine. Infected wound. Ah, and we can do it right now. Uh, let's just throw zero and three. Oh, okay. Um, or either of our generalists could just knock it out. Let's throw this one on. 13 seconds. We might as well stay in the habitat. And then... That was it, I think. Who's the other one then? There's one over here. It says that there's two sickness notifications. I don't think there are. Oh, and that fence is broken. That's not good. Okay, well, let's get Ranger Team 4 on the case. And then we might as well take control of Mobile Vet Unit 1 and just wait for this to be done. Oh, look, the other the Ranger Team's here too. There we go. By the time we, we actually get over there, this... This research will have been done. There we go. Oh, he's running. They are hard to hit when they run. I have to slowly creep up on them. It's quite hard to creep up on someone in what is effectively a tank. Oh, wow. Okay, they just slammed the tank. Two hits. There we go. They are healed. That's all we like. They're all good. They're all good. Um, what's wrong with this fence? Oh, this isn't the upgraded fence. That's a problem. I think everywhere else is good. It's just this back corner. And it's filling in. Look at that. That's pretty heavy duty, isn't it? It's a bit scary, really, with like the, the barbed wire thing on the top. <laughs> I don't think they're going to break out of that very easily, though. I've got to be honest. I think we're fairly safe with this. Although, does this mean because it's not electrified, there's now no power source for these? I think that's the problem. Because this is like old school. Um, yeah, I think it does. Which is slightly annoying because I would like the power connection. Um, we probably save loads in power. But then we do need a lot of like substations to make up for it. I mean, I say a lot. We need one. <laughs> Okay, we'll put a substation in uh, and we'll align it to the path a bit and just whack one in here. And then I think we're sorted, to be honest, with that. That's it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, this one needs fuel. That's absolutely fine. We've been doing a lot of trips lately. I know, and they're sick as well. Right, okay. They can treat them because we know it's just... Um, it's just medicating them with the... With the uh, dark gun thing. I don't know how many they can have. They can have five. So actually, we should assign them at least to these for now. Because this is kind of where they're living. And then at least they'll automatically go and do these things. And we've left a slot open for um, manually assigning them. We can get another paleo medical facility at some point. But I don't think we need to right now. What we do need to do is be overjoyed in the fact that we have six Brachiosaurus. And we can now get our Dryosaurus to unlock the... Um, Triceratops. So we need to send out some expeditions and get these little guys. Where are they? I think they're in North America. A lot of the dinosaurs in the film are from here. Ah, oh, perhaps they're not. Perhaps they're not. Okay. Should we look in the other regions? We've got South America. 
I know we've unlocked them. There's a lot in the south of the UK, aren't there? And then we move into Asia. Where are they? Am I missing them? Like, <laughs> I know we've unlocked them, so they'll be on the map. Perhaps you're like screaming at me because I've missed a really obvious one. Dryosaurus right there. Okay. Is that the only one? I think it is the only one. Okay. Well, we'll go for that one. Um, let's go for our cheaper expeditions and then let's get these three out. The ones that can do it quickly. And they'll be back soon anyway. It's not a very big expedition, that one. Um, and then we should be fine. These has, still have their breakouts because they can still see through. And this is the problem. I was hoping they'd be concrete and then they wouldn't be able to see guests through them. And that's that's what causes them to have this, uh, like the intelligence trait to be annoying <laughs> is, is because they can see through. So we may, we'll see how they go because they shouldn't be able to break through level five fencing as easily. Um, I wouldn't, I don't really want to have to have double layered fence. Like we could just put another layer of fence in, um, you know, and then it would be much, much harder for them to break out, but it just doesn't feel as, uh, doesn't feel the same. I just want one layer of fence. Yeah. It's because we've had our shelters closed. We've dropped some profit, but that's fine. We're actually still making good money and all of these are doing well. We should maybe look and see if we need to, uh, add any, oh, we've already added them all. Haven't we? Yes. I didn't think we'd added all of them. Okay, so it was just to that one. Yeah, let's see if we can add any more and if it improves. Yeah, it does. Okay, let's let's add a fish tank in there. And then I think that's everything. Let's go to the next one. And do the same. Let's add a fish tank in. We might as well get a bit more profit from these guys. And the same over here. I, I don't know if these ones were 100%. No, they weren't. Okay. Oh, they, they don't want to be though. That's fine. All right. Well, we'll leave them over here. And uh, hopefully when we get more guests come through, there's so many guests walking along here. Wow. This should be fine. We can unlock the main thoroughfare at some point as well. I think this is just the wide path that we have. The classic wide path. There is a one bigger than that. Oh, they're waiting for fossil space. Okay. Let's do a quick. Let's get rid of as many fossils as possible. Let's do that. Okay, we've done that fossil extraction. So now we should have our new fossils. Wow, here we go. Wow, so many to sell. Wow, that was insane. And we've got Dryosaurus. Perfect. We can sell that one. Loads of Dryosaurus. Okay, well, that is going to help us massively. We'll already, already be at 66%. That's incredible. Okay, um, I think... We have a couple of twos here that we can get rid of too. Let's do that. And then, oh, I don't want to use up this one. Let's use this generalist and then send out the uh, the dig team again to do the same thing. <laughs> want to get the rest of those fossils if we can, like as soon as possible. I think we may need to add some more forest for our Brachiosaurus as well. They seem a little bit um, discontent with the uh, the amount of forest available. So I'm just going to throw some more forest in. Well, not, not at the entrance, but uh, I'm going to throw some more forest in generally, though. Which will hopefully help them out. Ah, oh, they've just hit the green. Oh, they're 100% now. That's amazing. Okay, cool. They're 100%. They've still got loads of areas to explore. But they're quite happy here. Um, but we could, we'll make sure that there's good areas for everyone at some point. We need to, we need to blend it out so everyone's happy. I think it'd be cool if... if I believe the Triceratops have ground leaf or ground nut, so we can put, I don't know, ground leaf, I think. We've already got ground nut. So we can put some dinosaurs over here, if it is the Triceratops or not, um, whatever they require, we can put that over here too that's completely different to this over here. And then there's still a good area that guests can see them and they can go wherever they want. They're, they're free to, it's just that there's not more food for them in this area. But if they want to walk around or explore, they can definitely do that. They just know where their food is. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Now we're almost done with our expedition. So when we get that back, we're going to go into the fossils and uh, and finish that off. And hopefully that will get us there for the Dryosaurus so that we can start releasing some. Oh, that's good. This is good. Lots of Dryosaurus there. 
31. Oh, I think we're almost there. Oh, there's one there. 34. That's it. That's what we need. Oh, perfect. Okay, and we can just get our, get these two on it. They'll, they will can go straight ahead. And let's rest up all our staff that are pretty much exhausted. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> can get this going. I think, do, where's our staff center as well? Is there an upgrade to make this speed? Yes, that's what we want. I don't think that will work now because we've already started them. But in future, they will rest 10% quicker. I need to make sure we have these uh, these upgrades on the buildings where they're available. We don't have any for here. We should probably do some research to get more of these because they are really helpful um, having these uh, these upgrades. And another thing we need to get is more hotels. I'm very tempted to put in some small hotels over here by uh, the herbivore habitat so we can get some better guest viewing. But we are going to need to put them at a bit of an angle. Um, so I think we're going to have to go this way around. Um, and I'm not sure that that aligns perfectly with the fence. I think if we have them like this, that would still be good. We can have one there. And then have a small uh, path. I think that looks pretty good. And then we could always have another one up here somewhere. Even if it is on this side of the road, that would be fine. On the, on the road of the path, uh, I think if we have it over here, that's still better than nothing, isn't it? Or even, even at the end, we could have it at the end. That might be better. Let's have it there. And then they are going to need power. But that's fine, because we need some power over here anyway. Let's get our nice pylons. And we've got an injury. Who's injured now? Oh dear, okay. That's probably because he's smashing his, his head against this. It is a bit concerning. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're doing any damage to it now, which is good though. Yeah, they both just tried to break through the same part of the fence and not been very successful. Oh, we need to repair these buildings, otherwise we're not going to get anything from them. Didn't notice that. I wish there was like a better, maybe there is and I don't know about it, but I wish there was a view, um, like one of these management views, that would show you like damage, storm protection it has, but I don't think it has a uh, like one that shows damage, it's just got different things here, like shelter and everything. Yeah, that would be a good feature though, because then you could see where everything's damaged and then just assign your rangers. Otherwise, you have to kind of assign them and then zoom out and be like, where, where could I look? I'm like, you know, where, what, what's broken now? I think we're done with our Dryosaurus though. They're at a hundred percent, and this is the trait that we want: is vulnerable. And although we don't really want it in some ways, we're let's see what we can do for them if we modify their uh, their genes. And what do you think would be the the standard. I mean, I'm just going to leave it on what they're on because I, I feel like that's probably the, the standard for them. If we give them some other, like, good traits, I feel like this balances out the fact that we're, we're leaving the vulnerable trait. So we've already got a few. Let's have accommodating. And then they'll be really happy with their conditions generally. And then maybe if we give them 50% chance of quench and 50... Oh, I don't know if we're going to see this. This is 19 already. Maybe if we just give them accommodating. Oh, no, 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 no. The one on the right is the one it is. Oh, this is fine. Okay. Let's, uh, if we give them 50% quench and 50% small appetite, um, maybe we could do even more. Maybe we should just do 100% of both of these. That only takes it to nine each. These are really easy uh, to create, it seems. Let's save and exit. And it's only 20,000 as well. Let, let's get a couple of these guys on it and see what we can do. In fact, I'm going to use this generalist. There's a batch of six as well, so hopefully... I don't know what batch sizes they live in. Um, should we have a look at that? If we go into here, it should say uh, minimum population three. Okay, so one batch could be actually be enough for us to get everything we need. Um, I just hope that they eat the same, the same plants as everyone else. We can check that, but it's a bit too late now. They've already, <laughs> already been synthesized. Let's, uh, let's let this tick over. There we go. And see, we've got five eggs. Vulnerable, 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 vulnerable. That's four. That's absolutely fine. Let's get these five. It's a little group of five. 
They're like, they're all brothers and sisters. We're all sisters, aren't they? Because it's all females. They're all sisters. And let's set three scientists on it and get these guys incubated. And I think there was a scientist there. We need to rest. Yeah, there was. Let's rest that one. And then once we've released three with the vulnerable trait, we should have 20 herbivores now because we've got 15 paras and six brachiosaurus. So that, by my count, is 21 herbivores. At that point, we should unlock the Triceratops, which is a massive, like, it, for me, is one of the most nostalgic dinosaurs from the first film. It's one I remember so well. Um, so I'm very excited to get the Triceratops in there. <laughs> And we've got Ankylosaurus. We must have just unlocked one from, from something. I don't know what we've done. But I think we're going to unlock a few more now. Let's release these guys and have a look at them. Oh, through the little bottom door. Of course they are. Oh, they're, they're, they're slightly strange looking. Oh. That's a very odd sound. <laughs> I do kind of want one as a pet, though. The They're very cute. The <laughs> primary habitat was the ancient primordial forest that once covered this planet. It's called Dryosaurus. Before our research, there was no information on adult specimens of this dinosaur. We only had the fossilized record of juveniles. But now, that's all changed. Okay. After a slightly creepy Dr. Henry Wu has spoken, um, We've unlocked the toughness. Brilliant, which means that we, we can, uh, we, we've got it. The Dryosaurus is a genus of ornithopod dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period, around 155 to 140 million years ago, weighing around 80 to 90 kilograms and measuring up to five meters in length. Dryosaurus is a small and agile herbivore with an elongated neck, slender but powerful legs for running at speed, and a long stiff tail for retaining balance, key attributes for escaping predators. Its name Dryosaurus translates to tree lizard, derived from the Greek word dries, meaning tree or oak, referring to the forest areas that these dinosaurs likely inhabited. Dryosaurus was likely dependent on its ability to evade carnivores in order to survive, being unable to defend itself by other means. The Dryosaurus was one of the most common herbivores in the Morrison Formation during the late Jurassic, and as such is an extensively studied animal. Dryosaurus had a horned beak, densely packed molars, and cheek pouches to prevent the loss of food while chewing. It also had large eyes and near all-round vision, indicating that it had good eyesight. This would have been useful in detecting predators, and herds of Dryosaurus may have had few individuals acting as lookouts, much in the same way as modern meerkats do today. Young Dryosaurus grew up quickly and could walk and run in the first few hours after hatching. They continued growing throughout their lifetime, indicating that they were warm-blooded. And I think we'll call it there for this episode. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you in the next one.